what's your journey and how did gratitude and gratefulness, how did that become a part of who you are? So my journey has been phenomenal. <laughs> I've been enjoying it along the way. I um, noticed like through med school, how everything just like seemed to flow really well. I went on different interviews and at the time I had locks and um, I even had like my mom ask me, hey, you wanna wear my wig? Cause my locks were short at the time mm -hmm. um, for these interviews. And I said, no, like I want my life to flow and I wanna go to a school that is actually going to celebrate who I am. So if I gotta wear a wig just to get into med school, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's not the beginning of my journey, but it's important to be authentic to who you are. And that is kind of like what I, I wanna let people know. So I know that you'll agree, enjoying myself while I work is the vibe that I'm trying to be on. So I want to invite you guys to Sidebar ATL here in Atlanta, Georgia. Sidebar, on top of the good food and live music, they have three different experiences. That means you can join me in the garden room, in the gold room if you want to try the top of the line hookah, and they also have the dungeon where I hear what happens in the dungeon stays in the dungeon. So it's the perfect mix if you're here on business or you want to blow off some steam after work, you can meet me at Sidebar ATL so that you can have a little bit of dinner and then turn up afterwards if that's your jam. So check us out, 79 Poplar Street here in downtown Atlanta, or you can call 678-800-0741. Let's get it, work and play at the same time, right? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Work and Play Podcast. I'm your host, Arielle Young, career coach and career transformation coach. And I'm sitting here with someone who really is like my spirit animal, honestly. <laughs> the art of transition. Someone who has literally, she lives this like F this job mentality, but she also knows how to stand her own in the industry of medical, as well as helping you get very, very clear in your, your spirituality, your mental health, yeah. what we say, yeah. and um, all the things. So without further ado, would you introduce yourself, my dear? Hi, I'm Dr. Erica R. Jones, MD. I'm a medical doctor, I'm a board certified family medicine physician, podcaster, author, philanthropist, and overall creative. I'm really happy to be here. I'm overall, grateful for your awesome time. Chick. <laughs> That's so much like her, grateful for my time. I'm actually grateful for you being here. Um, I'm getting better at my um, my muscle of gratitude. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks, uh, really like a couple of days, I, I did a live and I was talking about how I was saying thank you to some, some folks who had been on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, thank you for being a friend. And I realized like this person was truly a friend. And you know, it's not as easy, especially when you transition into entrepreneurship, like, why are we making this connection, right? Right. So she responded, yeah. she was like, you know, I'm grateful for you. And I realized there have been times when I have been terribly ungrateful, mm -hmm. terribly ungrateful. Yeah. And it made, it hit me so hard that I was like, you know what? You have to get better at this. Cause there was a time when I was doing like a, just gratefulness journals every single day. Really? It was just a habit, you know, right. like, you know, just lifting yeah. weights. But there was a time, you know, those days when you're like, oh, nothing's right. Woe is me. Yeah. Nobody's doing anything for me. And then I realized she's been here all along. Yeah. Yeah. Snap out of it. Sna <laughs> snap out of it. Literally. So yeah. for you, what's your journey and how did gratitude and gratefulness, how did that become a part of who you are? So my journey has been phenomenal. <laughs> I've been enjoying it along the way. I um, noticed like through med school, how everything just like seemed to flow really well. I went on different interviews and at the time I had locks and um, I even had like my mom ask me, hey, you wanna wear my wig? Cause my locks were short at the time mm -hmm. um, for these interviews. And I said, no, like I want my life to flow and I wanna go to a school that is actually going to celebrate who I am. So if I gotta wear a wig just to get into med school, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's not the beginning of my journey, but it's important to be authentic to who you are. And that is kind of like what I, I wanna let people know. 
Are you still trying to get a leg up on your entrepreneurial career? Now I told you about the morning meetup, the community that was created for the betterment of entrepreneurship. And we are cooking up some really cool things. Now here's the thing, if you join today, you can actually get in for 60% of the original price. So if you join today, all you have to do is download the app and I provided the link below so that you can join us. We have community, we have a book club, and it's the largest group that meets every single day, Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. to literally get a head start on entrepreneurship so if you're still trying to grow you don't know what your business is gonna be but you know you want to be an entrepreneur this is the community for you so check out the morning meetup click the link below download the app and join us today so as I'm going on these med school interviews I went to Meharry I went to my interview at Meharry in Nashville Tennessee shout out to all the HBCU graduates right um, and one of the admissions officers actually complimented my little short dress. <laughs> so I love your hair. And I said, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> there we have it. <laughs> this is where I'm going. You manifested exactly what you said you wanted. Yeah. Someone like a place that accepted you and celebrated who you are. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So, you know, starting my medical career as a med student in Nashville, Tennessee, was it was very important. I was around people who were nourishing me, um, people who understand the unique challenges that I was going to have as an African American female with natural hair, um, going out into the workforce, going out into these different rotations. So my journey started there. Mm. I have been grateful for who I am and for my courage to walk like authentically, like walk my path authentically. So after med school, like I had to, of course, you know, you got to apply for a residency. So you're you going through that process all over again. Yeah. Or at least you have to toughen yourself up for that type of evaluation again. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like a never ending test. Mm -hmm. Like being in medicine is like a never ending test. So you got to apply, you got to go on interviews just to get in school. Then you have to perform in school. Then you have to apply <coughs> and perform again in these different residency interviews. And once again, um, going to UAB, um, Huntsville Family Medicines program, it was not easy to get into. It was not easy to get through. I think residency was like one of the most tumultuous times in my life. Like it's one of the most difficult things I've ever done. I'm grateful for having gotten through it. I'm grateful for um, my grandmother who prayed for me, my mom's friends who prayed for me because it was it was literally the toughest time that yeah. I've ever had in life. Um, being sleep deprived, being hungry and knowing that, you know, you're a physician, but you're getting paid like <laughs> nothing yeah. compared to what, you know, your attendings are getting paid because you're still learning. Yeah. So in hindsight, and you are, um, I can tell you the muscle of gratitude is built up because you understand that life afforded you these opportunities mm -hmm. for you to be who you are today. Mm -hmm. But as you talk about the gruesomeness of, of just experiencing mm -hmm. uh, medical school, I'm curious of what that girl was experiencing. Like, did you ever have those moments of like feeling ungrateful or even, cause, cause the thing yeah. is, we don't really know when we're not being <laughs> grateful. Yeah. So what was it like for you and how did you process like getting through med school during that time? So getting through med school was not the most difficult part of my journey. Mm. I actually was surrounded by other people who were a lot like me. So the, the times when we felt ungrateful, like, man, they got us doing this. We don't need to be doing this. This is a waste of our time. We were all in it together, mm -hmm. right? So the camaraderie that we had, and I'm also a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. So we had a lot of different events. You know, we had intramural sports mm -hmm. that allowed us to lean on each other. And our professors were down to earth. We could see them at dinner and talk to them about the times we were having. We could go to their offices and they would tell us, like, I'm trying to help you out. Like, you're mm -hmm. being ungrateful. And they would literally tell us. So you had to have, you know, this humble spirit in terms of being able to accept criticism and, and understand that, like, you, you got to take a step back. Like, snap out of it. I'm trying to help you. I'm giving you the resources to pass this test. I'm giving you what you need to get through life. Yeah. You guys are showing up to the classrooms and your professors are like, listen, I'm trying to help you. Be grateful. Yeah. Yeah. So as a student, you know, you end up thinking that you're doing the most grueling work 
because you only have that perspective. You have a student's perspective. You don't have the perspective of the professor that has seen thousands of people like you yeah. in those same seats. So while we're complaining and moaning and groaning about, you know, what was on the last test, we're moaning and groaning about the assignment that we have for lab. The professors are looking at us like, we're giving you the instructions, we're giving you the blueprint, snap out of it. Like, yeah. get it together and realize what we're giving you. Yeah, so years after that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You are, when I think about you being in that situation, you're like, I'm sorry, he is for thumb, me out. Nah, he <clears throat> You can ask him, like, how long he's gonna be right here. Well, we I could, but, um, Maybe it's... I figure he'll be done, like, because it ain't minutes. that much for him to do. Oh, uh, okay. I'm going to give it just another second. Okay. Um, but I want to connect your uh, gratefulness during that experience mm -hmm. to you you creating this, this um, book. Okay, gotcha. And then we can get into your transition. Cool. Okay. Um, so how do you know where to, like cut and edit it because I, what I do is like I put up a book in front of like the oh so that they can see so I can see when I'm going back to edit it so I have an editor oh got it okay. yeah <clears throat> but even when I didn't I think I was just going in but mm -hmm. that's smart because otherwise you got to watch the whole thing <laughs> to all find over out where again. that is yeah that's yeah. good <laughs> I'm actually gonna use that <laughs> okay yeah from this day forward <laughs> I'm gonna be like Starting over. Oh, that's really good. Anyway, yeah, I hadn't thought about that. A hundred episodes in. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All your hundred episodes. Thank you, thank you. That's and big. a bunch of them in the chamber. So, yeah, yeah I got time to, to hone in on this content. So, um, this is going to be the first one since then that I've got a new idea okay. of how I want to bring it to the folks. So, cool. Um, so, yeah. In this time, you were not as grateful. You, right. One could say a knucklehead kid. Yeah. And you had to have professors to just bring you out of that ungratefulness, mm -hmm. right? Then years later, you're this very, like, you know, grateful person. Your energy just gives gratefulness, right? Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. absolutely. And I know that it's through practice. So mm -hmm. when did you develop a practice of, like, creating um, gratefulness or gratitude inside yourself? So I had a mentor that... I should have listened to more, but one of the things I did listen to, I asked her how she became the phenomenal woman that, you know, she was at the time. I have, I've had several mentors and all of them spoke to some form of writing down like the positive things that happened, uh, writing down the things that made you happy, writing down the things that you were grateful for, that you appreciated. Yeah. So now you can see, you know, different stories and articles even a lot of the, the great entrepreneurs, um, Oprah, you hear them like just randomly spit out these quotes on, on gratefulness and on gratitude and have an attitude of gratitude. Yeah. So it's truly something that um, I just feel like it's, it, it was in me, but I'm an only child too. So when I would throw tantrums, my mom would always be like, hey, you need to be thankful. Really? Yeah, like you you better be thankful for what you have. And then coming from, you know, this Southern Christian background of saying, thank you, Lord, for the food. You know what I'm saying? We had to pray before every meal. Like mm -hmm. we pray at Thanksgiving. So I think it's cultural almost. Yeah, but it um, sounds like for you as a person, you have these uh, reminders of gratitude around you, yeah. but you're not necessarily being, like soaking it all in. It's kind of like working on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They say if it's not if you're if it's not working for you, it's working on you. Yeah, for sure. So it sounds like you, art of transition. It sounds like you transition from kind of like this only child syndrome. Yeah. You know, like me, me, me kind of thing to yeah. being like now you recognize the grateful, the gratitude in every single thing. Because exactly. we talk about it all the time. Yeah, yeah. So what was that transition like? Now now you have the Art of Transition podcast. Right. And one of the things that you talk about um, in essence of transition is, is not just the transition of your, from your job, even though we're going to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. But the transition as a person, like as we learn to become our full self, right? Mm -hmm. So when did the light bulb come on, come off for you or um, what was your um, 
snap out of it moment when you finally got it? Mm. I think my snap out of it moment was when I would be upset at work. Mm -hmm. Like I would have trying days at work where I didn't get to eat, where, you know, I had to miss an event because I was still like trying to finish charts. And I started to just kind of realize I was missing out on my loved one's lives. Like I was missing holidays. Mm -hmm. And then like I had all this money, but I didn't have my people, you know? I, I couldn't go to the birthday celebration. I couldn't go to the baby shower. Or I would just be too tired. If I did make it to you, I would be too tired. So I can't, I, I, it's like at some point you gotta figure out like, how am I gonna balance this all? And I just decided that like, yeah, it was some somewhere around maybe 2017. I think that's, that's when my snap out of him. I was like, yeah. So I have all this money now mm -hmm. and yeah, I miss this, 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 and that. Yeah. I can't get to my family like I want to get to my family. So you're like, yeah, no. I'm going to focus <laughs> on the people who love me and the people I love. I want to spend more time with them. Yeah. So and you then, decided. Yeah. So I, I was literally, I had taken a trip with one of my buddies. Um, we went to a medical conference in Africa as well. And then you see people who um, have a lot. We saw a lot of wealth in Africa. Um, we were in Cape Town for a specific part of time. Um, then we toured like five other countries around that, around Southern Africa. And then you also see people who don't really have a lot. Yeah. And they're happy as larks, <laughs> just, you know, living life, um, still having their basic needs met, but they didn't have a lot. Yeah. So I think all of that. You find the, the most gracious people in some of the like dreariest places. Yeah. So, you know, it, I, I think it was just a culmination mm -hmm. of just experiences around 2017. So then I decided like I was asking for a Monday or a Friday off from this specific job I had. And they told me no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, Outside of other frustrations that I had with the company, I knew that I wanted to work in telemedicine, which is a field that at the time, you know, back in 2017, 2018, people weren't talking about virtual visits, right? Mm -hmm. Now it's widely <laughs> accepted. Yeah, we're in 2022 and it's all the rave. You you know, you got companies that are making, you know, millions on top of millions yeah. in, in the virtual care space. So I knew back then that's where I wanted to be. But for whatever reason, you know. I wasn't allowed to serve in that way. So eventually, you know, as the frustrations mounted with this one particular job, I said, F this job. And then I wrote a book about it. <laughs> and then you wrote a book about it. And then you got socks, you got merch on the on the same, like, yeah. like I love, I love it. You like, F this job, got the socks, got the book. Yeah. And honestly and truly, a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. The best way to support the Work and Play podcast is by subscribing to the YouTube channel and by going to your favorite podcast player to subscribe and rate the Work and Play podcast. That's all you have to do. So if you are liking the Work and Play podcast, the content, the stories that we're sharing, and you know that this will help someone, go ahead and share the content to someone who could actually use it and help them on their journey to transition from corporate into entrepreneurship. Now let's get back into the episode. But one thing that you, you, it sounds like you didn't let get to you was that F the job mentality. Cause what can happen is mm -hmm. you have that F the job mentality and then you get fired, mm -hmm. right? Because you, then you just start losing steam, right. you flounder off, you go into, you hit depression because like now you done, you done got fired, you got the F this job mentality and you mm -hmm. can't bounce back. But you took a different route. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to my clients and I'm saying like, I know you wanna leave. Mm -hmm. I know you wanna leave like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, but you gotta realize one, there's a reason that you're there. Right. And then two, there, there are actual benefits and resources that you can use on the job right now. Exactly. Can you talk about how you bridge the gap? But first of all, they told you no. Mm -hmm. So anyone could be like, you know what, F the job, I'm leaving now. Yeah. But you, you didn't. No. So yeah. how did you bridge the gap between when you decided you were going to leave and mm -hmm. when you actually made that transition? So bridging the gap is um, largely about planning. So although I wanted to say F this job, I also knew there's an art of transition. That's why the book is called. So it's F asterisk CK, this job, the art of transition. 
Eric by Erica R. Jones, MD. It's on Amazon right now. You can also get it on my website. Um, a part of bridging the gap is planning. If you know you're a poor planner, you got to find somebody. You got to build you a team. And I talk about that in the book. So you as a career coach, you know, I'm sure you help people understand that there is a plan that has to take place. Absolutely. So I went to my uh, appointments, my doctor's appointments. I made sure everything was in good standing. I got all my tests that I needed. So I utilized my insurance benefits, mm -hmm. right? So another part of that is like my flexible spending account. I knew that, at, you know, when you decide that you're gonna transition away from a certain position, you still have those benefits to use. So I made sure that I was able to utilize that Let's go. before I, I left. Yeah. I literally was like, as soon as, because our company was called, our, our program was called Rally. Uh -huh. And so you got to go in there and you get like $50 for saying that you don't smoke. Yeah. You get like $50 for like going for a walk. And when I realized that, yeah. I'm like, we're going to run up the bag. Yeah. So I leveled about like maybe $500 on the card and it seems like nothing. But when you don't have health insurance, exactly, that could pay for a medical vis vi visit. Yeah, yeah, or shoot, it could pay for you to actually get something if you get hurt. Yeah. So that's a that's a move. Like literally, that's <laughs> a play. Literally, yeah. pick that if you're not taking those, you need to. Yeah. So you have to understand and be grateful for where you are, right? Be grateful for that nine to five because guess what? That's going to help you build your dreams. That's going to help you get a little bit of gas along the journey, right? Yes. So a lot of times, even when you're in a position where you don't want to do something anymore, you have to figure out how not to do that anymore. Yes. yes. So what was your first step of being like, okay, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, so I called my mom, I called my dad, I called my brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Because I knew that um, I was gonna want to move around, I was gonna want to travel a little bit too. I called some of my friends, hey, I might not have a lot of money, but I want to come visit. I want to explore like the area. I want to see if maybe I want to move. Mm -hmm. um, don't get mad at me if I eat up all your food, you know what I'm saying, when I come visit, because I'm not going to have a job. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to support me? So I had to. That's huge. Yeah. Talk, so talk about like the courage <laughs> that it takes. For, honestly and truly, um, I have an issue sometimes of just asking for help. Oh, yeah. Nah, I had to get out of that. <laughs> Did you, you did you ever resonate with that? Yes. So you used to be the same. I used to be the same way. But a part of, you know, this transition was also realizing I was going to be in a vulnerable state for mm -hmm. a little while. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, broke, broke, but just in a point where I wasn't going to be spending a lot of money going out. Yeah. So my friends, my family had to understand that, hey, can we just eat some food that's at the house? Yeah. I'm not going to be wanting to go out and spend a whole lot of money because I'm going to be in this transition. Yes. So outside of that, I also talked to my financial team. I understand that I'm fortunate enough to have a financial team. So for those people who aren't as fortunate, it's like you got to be your own team. You got to build your own budget. You have to get your own accounts settled. Yeah. A part of that play as well is if you know you got money coming in, go ahead and get you one of those credit cards with the 0% APR. Facts. That's actually a really good move. So a lot of times a credit card companies might offer you um, a 0% APR for 12 months yeah. or for 15 months. And I'm yeah. not saying you have to run that up, but at some point you need like a little safety net yeah. just in case. I'm thinking specifically in um, the transition I talk about, because what I like that you're introducing here is mm -hmm. the transition, not specific to entrepreneurship, because mm -hmm. my journey wasn't specific to entrepreneurship. Mm. Um, when I left, I didn't know that I was going to become a business owner, right? Okay. But this play that you're talking about with getting the 0% um, APR, one, if you're still in your nine to five and you still have a good salary, you can qualify for a, a nice um, a credit limit now. And you yeah. can get a couple credit credit cards and you don't have to do anything with it, right? Exactly. And it serves the purpose for us to be able to find ourselves, right? Exactly. So like, what do I want to do? And you already have enough money, so you got the cushion. Mm -hmm. But entrepreneurship, because what you just said was, I mean, you don't have to run it up, but that can literally be the investment that you make in your business. Yeah, yeah, literally. And you started your business. Yeah, so they call it a hustling um, in medicine or moonlighting mm. when you have like a side job outside of your job that you're employed for. Now, I have been hustling, I have been moonlighting. Um, So they call it uh, moonlighting in medicine, and I have been moonlighting for, you know, a while, 
uh, pretty much since residency. I had like three jobs in residency. And what I decided to do when I left the job was to start my own medical group, right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize until I met this older physician one day and I never saw her again. But she looked at me when I was working and she said um, something to the effect of, yeah, I come in here when I want to because I own my own business. Mm. Now, at the time when I was hustling, I didn't have my own business. I was getting paid under my name. But I had another snap out of it moment when I realized it was almost like she was an angel. You know mm. what I mean? Like just me being able to see her flow in and out of the clinic. I had only seen it that one day and I never saw her again after that. But I, I, I had the wherewithal to somehow go in that memory bank and say, dang, she did say she. So I opened my own medical group. You started your medical group before you left. Yeah. That's the play. <laughs> That's the play. Did I you did all the paperwork. A, yeah. You know, filed all that stuff before I left. Mm -hmm. Did you have a revenue plan of yeah. how you were going to make money? If you think back in hindsight, is that one of those things that you would have done if um, you had thought about it? Maybe. I think maybe um, having more structure would have allowed me to reach those financial goals sooner mm -hmm. in terms of building my business. Um, if I would have had a marketing plan, yeah. you know, even to build my own personal brand out so that no matter what business I started, you know, I would be on a different level, mm. right? So while I did have a plan, it wasn't super thorough, yeah. you know, but you don't know what you don't know until you don't know it. Exactly. You know, you know I'm on the same journey. Yeah. I think I did like a little napkin math. Uh -huh. I was saving aggressively in my little savings account. Uh -huh. But then after that, I'm like, okay, we're going to figure this thing out. Yeah. And I was so pressed to leave that I just didn't necessarily plan it. So it, with you in hindsight, sometimes we get the best guidance from the people who just went through it. And mm -hmm. y'all don't have to just benefit from my story. You can benefit from yours, uh, from Erica's. So you said a marketing plan. Yeah, I would have had a marketing plan mm -hmm. um, outside of my business to mm -hmm. brand my own self. Mm -hmm. Now, what would that have looked like? So now, now I that have, you know what you know. Now I have DrEricaJones.com. <clears throat> Now in my bio on Instagram, Dr. Erica Jones, uh, TikTok, Dr. Erica Jones, you, you would see a wellness expert. I didn't even document the speaking engagements I was leading. Yes. <laughs> like I, when you're out in the community and you're really working, a lot of times you're not documenting things. So I would have had someone that is, hey, I saw you did this. Okay, let's put this on there. Let's put this on there. So just documentation is important when it comes to whatever you're doing yeah because if you don't have any record of it then the people who were there you might not ever see them again exactly they say if it didn't and, and if it if you don't in 2022 yeah if you don't record it it didn't happen <laughs> that's the worst part about it, especially in 2020 like when we're every everything is content yeah right and you done you've done all the things but it's like yeah <laughs> but you don't have pictures of it yeah truly so you would have a marketing plan and then uh -huh. Like you said, so those of y'all who don't know Dr. Erica, she's like I said, when I say my spirit animal, it's because she's real chill. Right? <laughs> I, got, I got all the structure for days and I'm working on being more chill. But I'm thinking about how you would have applied some structure to um, your revenue plan. Like mm -hmm. knowing what you know now, what would you have put in place so that you would have hit your revenue goal sooner? Uh, quarterly investments, mm -hmm. not just from the personal side, but like, okay, quarterly investments in terms of business. So on my calendar, I would also have quarterly events that I need to attend along with the people who are going to be on my team. You talking good. <laughs> oh, you talking good. Come on. What else? Um, those are the things. Those are the major things that I can say um, from a physician's perspective. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to optimize your health while you're going through all of these things. Yeah. The biggest, most expensive thing we own is our bodies and our minds. So investing as an owner, as an entrepreneur, as a nine to five or whatever you're doing, investing in your mind and your body is by far the biggest investment. And you have to plan those. You have to plan those visits to the doctor. You have to plan those visits to the therapist. You have to plan the meetings that you're going to attend, the networking that you're going to, you have to plan it. Yes. 
So if I would have had that earlier, if mm -hmm. I just would have had the plan and all I would have had to do was go, mm -hmm. I would have been further along. That's that's so huge. Um, and it sounds like speaking engagements and these things were generating you cash. And though in from a marketing perspective and from a uh, monetary perspective, mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't. And I say we, I'm talking about my clients, like we're not thinking <laughs> about like, oh, this is what I'm doing and mm -hmm. it's bringing traction in my life. Yeah. Let me do it quarterly. Yeah. I think that is so good. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you are your business. So you start telling people, hey, I'm getting ready to make this transition. I'm mm -hmm. going to need y'all to support me. Yeah. Your friends and family start to hustle around you and support you. You traveling around. When did you start to decide, okay, when I leave, this is what my life is going to look like when I leave? Mm. Or was that an intentional process at the time? Yeah, it was intentional because <clears throat> I was in a position where my friends were in emergency medicine. A couple of my friends were in emergency medicine. They're traveling. <laughs> so they they might be working three shifts. You know what I'm saying? They might be off for four. And they set up their schedule so they have eight days off or seven days off or hospitalist. Mm. Um, you know, they may work for five days and, and then be off for five. So I'm around these people who have this flexibility. They have this freedom in location. So I kind of looked at them and I looked at other opportunities um, that people were taking advantage of. And I said, hey. I see that there's a way to do this. Like I can still be authentic to who I am as a physician, who I am as someone who loves to travel and who I am as someone who loves to give back to the community. You can have that type of lifestyle. So I don't know that there was one like culminating moment that I knew uh, that, that I knew that it existed. It was just like me paying attention to what I didn't have. I was grateful for where I was, but I knew that there's more to life. Yeah. I knew that there's no way I'm about to be going in these clinics every single day for the rest of my life. Yeah. There was a time when I really enjoyed that. But I think the when you think about the art of transition, this life is not stagnant. Nothing on our body is stagnant. Our cells turn over. A lot of stuff turns over, it changes. Now the fat cells, they for whatever reason, they don't they stick, <laughs> stick to you. Yeah. And you know yeah. this from a medical perspective. <laughs> but everything else rejuvenates itself. Yeah. So it's like, why am I not focusing on doing this for myself, my yeah. body, my mind, yeah. and my career? Yeah. When you invest over a quarter million dollars in your education, you can try some different things. <laughs> and that's the thing. So even though you're in the medical field, you're leaving the medical field, that mentality still stays. Mm -hmm. Quarter million dollars in your education? Yeah, I'm not leaving the medical field. I'm just trying different things in other fields yes. as well. You know, But what it's I mean? the mentality of investing. Yeah. Because you just started with like, you know, your biggest investment is in self. You might not realize it. For a lot of corporate professionals, we leave corporate with like ten to fifty thousand dollars in debt, right? Because you've already invested in that education. Uh -huh. Use it. Yeah. Use it. Yeah. And get and try other things, like you said. I'm curious all the things that you tried. <laughs> all the things that you tried. What? What? Because you see in life unfold before your eyes. You're like, ooh, I like that. It's, it seems like you're going yeah. through a grocery store of your vision. Like, ooh, I like that. I like that. So what did you start to try? I did a lot of things just to kind of figure out what, like, so I really love sneakers, right? So I started to see, like, the Supreme brand at the time. Um, my people live in New York, too. So the Supreme brand started off at, like, a skater brand, and people would go crazy for it. So what did I do? I started just going to Supreme website, ordering stuff, and then, like, there was a demand for it. So I would resell it. This is why you're still in your job. Yeah. You just got the... <laughs> I love it. Keep going. So, you know, at the time, like, we had these uh, Amex cards. Well, I've had an Amex card since 2001. Um, so you have a credit card, and you could take that same credit card, buy something that has high value. So not only are you generating cash from that, you're also generating points, which is an entire form of currency. So I've seen people like him 500, you know, talk about that mm -hmm. um, recently, like in the past couple of years, but I was doing it, you know, back then. Yep. So those are just, you know, various things. And if you do decide to use those points for, you know, food or for other things, you can bank those until you really need them. Yeah. 
So for me, um, that's one of the things I started to do. I love that. Another thing that I started to do was create uh, books, right? So I love to write. I've been writing since, I don't know, I used to be in oratorical contests, writing contests when I was like 10. <laughs> And um, I had a friend that said, Erica, stop putting all this stuff on Facebook. Why don't you just write a book and sell it? So that's exactly what I did. So my first book was called Jewels of Joy. It was about a cousin that I lost and the seven things that I learned from her mm -hmm. that I continue to take with me. Then I did a poetry um, and photography book. So I've now transitioned um, from actually spending a lot of time writing books to writing podcast episodes, writing interviews and creating low content books. Mm. So creating a low content book is something like a, a journal, right? This is a it's my journal it, that I got from <laughs> Dr. Erica that I use almost every day. Yeah. So these, this journal is it's called a low content book and it's mm -hmm. called low content because all you have to do is design the cover and the inside. Okay. The content actually comes from whoever owns the book, right? So for me, on my, on, on my behalf, I'm producing a low content book, which is a lot different from a book that it took me a whole year to write. Okay, low content book. You said the only thing that you have to do is change the cover and the back of the book, but then the insides of the cover, someone else owns it. No, I own everything. But what I'm saying is I'm not writing. I have not written every page. The journal is blank. Okay. Right? So mm -hmm. you have blank lines. Low content. Yeah. Uh, I'm there. Okay. Yeah. So um, things like uh, calendars, mm -hmm. um, planners, and things like that. Yeah. Those are like some low content like examples and journals are examples of low content books. Yeah. And you know what's, what's you're talking about the money play and, and we can, of course, get back to your um, transition and things that you're trying. Mm -hmm. But the most impactful thing on a day when um, I specifically was like, I woke up, I was just not feeling myself. Mm -hmm. And I went to the park. I took your book with me. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? You know, I put my little camera up. I'm like, we're going to just capture some content. You know, I'm just not feeling myself. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I opened the page up to was um, today. I'm so happy that I'm, I'm grateful for X, Y. And it's like fill in the blank. Yeah. So all I needed was a prompt. Yeah. And a, a empty page to think on. Yeah. And as much as we, we talk about like the technical skill, the technical term, you know, low content, mm -hmm. the value was immense. Because if it hadn't been for that page, for me to open it up, and I'm not even sure if it was I am grateful for, I can't even remember what specific prompt it was, but it literally snapped me out of it. Yeah. And I got to start a writing. Yeah. And I started to realize. Oh, my day is about to be lit. <laughs> and my day was lit. And they, somebody specifically asked me, are you, how are you such a light? And I said, you know what? Would you believe that today was a down day for me? Yeah. He was like, no, was it? I was like, yes, I literally started my day like crap. And I started to journal, think about what I was grateful for. And it led me to you because I started even thinking about you. I'm grateful for, you know, being in the, in, on the speaking engagement, being on stage, doing those things. He's like, dang. Yes, I'm grateful for today. And yeah. it was a chain reaction because even now he still, he still DMs me what he's grateful for. Wow. Mm -hmm. Chain reaction. <laughs> so we talking about low content books, but the, the value is still there. So as yeah. you think about, you know, in your transition, what you can actually create yeah. and what problem you can solve, you can actually create something like this for low energy, but it actually creates so much value in the person who has the problem. So I just want you to, again, if you're, if you're not taking notes, I encourage you <laughs> to do that. Yeah. So you started with low content. Yeah. Books. So, um, so that's what I've been producing as well. Um, I just, I tried podcasting. I'm still doing that. That's right. Yeah. So I'm the host of the Art of Transition podcast. It is a phenomenal platform for individuals who are just making some type of transition, um, whether or not you're quitting your job and you've started a new business, you know, whether or not you're switching jobs, whether or not you're trying art, whether or not like you're changing your style in art or music, it's for everybody to just learn from each other. I love it, I love it. Yeah. You know, I'm curious about the transition from an external perspective. Mm -hmm. What I mean is, <clears throat> When I made one of my um, mental changes, because mm -hmm. you wouldn't believe this, but I was, I was not, I didn't, I had no locks. You had locks before me. Mm -hmm. um, 
But I don't think I resonated with my image or my identity as a black woman. Mm. So nobody would have ever said, oh, Ariel's going to lead the revolution. Yeah. Right. It was just a moment in time where I, we were having a conversation. I made a comment and my homegirl snaps back and said, oh, my God, Ariel, I can't believe you had you have an opinion on that. And it wasn't a dig. It was really like mm -hmm. this is a new Ariel. Oh, wow. So for you in your transition, what was it like for you to transition internally, mm -hmm. but experience like how other people were experiencing your transition? If that makes sense. I don't think I still fully have a grasp on how everyone else is experiencing my various changes. I had locks for 20 years, so I just cut them off almost a year ago. So while people will speak on like your outward appearance, um, and it's crazy, like who actually will have an opinion on how you look mm -hmm. <laughs> and how you show up in the world? It's like, I don't even know you cared. Like, why do you care actually what my hair looks like? You know what I mean? And, and for someone who went from the bob you know, the, the permed bob, uh, two locks, and, and then to having uh, my locks praised, right? There's, a, there's an interview I did with Black Enterprise where, you know, we talk about some of the controversy that I went through, mm. you know, with locks and having locks in medicine mm -hmm. in a, a very, very traditional field with a non-traditional, you know, hairstyle. Um, that created some interesting times, you know what I mean? So I still don't think I have a full grasp on how people perceive me because you'll see me now with short hair, it might be curly. Um, I think when I went to South by Southwest, I had a, a bob, a, a blonde bob, straight hair. Um, Did you? This was, yeah. wait, what was the South by Southwest? A couple months ago? It was recent, maybe like March or Let's go. something like that. So when you see different photographs, mm -hmm. you know, you'll see me like this um, at one time. Another time you might see me in a Nike sports bra and, and some leggings, you know. I think that all of it is just for me um, a reflection of how I feel at that time or what was clean at the time. <laughs> <laughs> when you are an entrepreneur, when you're doing all these different interviews, when you're, I mean, I might change clothes three or four times in a day. so. In terms of an outward appearance, I probably still don't know how people, you know, totally perceive me. Mm. What um, about internal? Internal, I'm the same person. People will tell you, oh, yeah, Erica, she cool, she chill, da, da, da. But, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know, make sure you keep it cool with it. Mm. Right? And they'll tell you, oh, yeah, she's super smart, this, this, and that. But for a long time, I didn't feel comfortable telling a lot of people what I actually did because I didn't want to be a target. Target for what? Right. For like for negativity. I just wanted to go along, live my life. Um, mm. And I would tell people um, in D.C. now in Atlanta, in 2022 in Atlanta, one of the first questions people ask me is, what do you do? Yeah. As a physician, people want letters to, for their electricity. Uh, people that don't even know you ask you for the strangest things. What uh, do you mean? I'm so confused. Right. Cause Cause I be confused too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but like when if you're a physician and you share your experience, what's the first thing that people say that make you feel targeted? People ask for random things that like they feel entitled to your time. Like, you could be at dinner. Like, with, can you check this mold? Okay, yeah, okay. like, hey, I got this rash. There's like, people that don't even know you, they find out, they're like, hey, and they are serious. Oh they'll my catch God. you after dinner. They'll catch you wherever you are in the elevator. Like, what a random question. It's like, there's a certain point when you need time to yourself to process what you're going to do next. Mm. You need time to yourself to process in that elevator moment or that moment in the bathroom might be the only minute you have for yourself in a super busy day, right? Mm. But the more uh, notoriety that you get, right? Then you don't really have those moments in public anymore. Yeah. So I think for me, I didn't want to be a target for the attention. Yeah. The crazy thing is you're sticking out like a sore thumb with this <laughs> nice yellow dress on. So as soon as she walks in, I'm like, oh yes, it's, it's always a vibe. <laughs> and so I'm not sure about what you intended that on. That was then. <laughs> But this is that. This, so this is, is the internal transition you yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That was then. So now I don't mind speaking about myself. I have systems in place. I have more security when it comes to my interactions. Mm. When I move, um, where I live, there's more uh, barriers. 
So when you talk about like becoming who you are and making like an inward transition, it doesn't always have to be totally congruent, but some things do have to flow. Yeah. Like you have to be able to, you know, protect your privacy, protect your peace mm -hmm. and protect the place where you reside. Yeah. Right. What I'm hearing right now is like, as you're, as you are setting your life up to let your light shine more, you've learned how to put barriers at the words you use mm -hmm. in place to protect your energy because mm -hmm. you're going to shine brighter and brighter yeah. and though you're more open to sharing those things um you still have now you're cognizant of the barrier you have to put in place in order to maintain these these comfortable um relationships or relationships but also um boundaries is the word i was thinking of um i remember off camera maybe it was the last time we talked you were saying that you decided you were gonna look different, like you were gonna dress with intention. Yeah. You remember that conversation? Oh, right, 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 yeah. I love that about you um, and the fact that you made that decision because um, you went from a sneakerhead, so I'm sure it was probably a little bit more sporty. For sure. Right, right? <laughs> For sure. Talk a little, so we, we kind of just talked about the external and internal mm -hmm. transition, how other people see us. Okay. But for you, what made you sit down and decide, I'm gonna be intentional with the way that I dress? My friends, <laughs> my mother. <laughs> what they say? Um, I'm a sweatpants, you know, um, <clears throat> tights, leggings, uh, flip flops type of chick. Mm -hmm. My friends would be like, "E, you gonna wear that?" <laughs> <laughs> you like, am I gonna wear this? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. But then it, it started, you know, to just resonate with me like you know they aren't just saying things just to say them right they're not just commenting on this just to comment there's something behind it and I had a talk with a guy older guy he might be seven he was like Erica I know who you are he's in, he lives in my building he said, Erica I know who you are but a lot of people don't know who you are so I started to just experiment with it so I would still wear the sweatpants or the leggings but then I would wear a blazer okay when you traveling a lot you want to be comfortable and I started to notice I get a different type of greeting in the sky lounge I get a different type of greeting on the plane and from the drivers when I have this little blazer on so it's small changes that I started to notice um, that actually made a difference. So I just started trying out different stuff. I got that express, uh, what do you call the express pass or something like that, where you can get a monthly subscription of just Ooh, uh, They different. can send you like nice little pieces yeah. and you decide what you want. You build your closet and then they send you, they randomly send you pics. Mm. So I just started experimenting with different things and, and then paying attention to what happens when I go certain places with certain things on. Mm -hmm. And it's, well, what is it saying? You get more bees with honey. Honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. And now she looking like a nice little bubble bee out here. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So it matters how you show up, right? Yeah. And while I'm thinking, hey, I know who I am. I know I'm an amazing woman. Um, people will treat you different based on how you look. That's a word. Yeah. That's a word. Especially when you start off like F this job and you want to do everything against the norm, right? You want to do everything against the transit, the traditional note, like some, I am not quite of the mind of like, you know how the locks look like. Yeah. They're like free flowing locks, yeah. right? I wanted those so bad. You know, inside me too, especially if I was going to live on the beach forever. Yeah. But I think because I'm in America, something says, okay, there's balance. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I'm uh, sacrificing my soul for not wearing the free flow, but yeah. I do on the inside want them. But then what you're saying is this gradual uh, evolution of going like from F this job, but not letting that take over and just kind of look slumpy and mm -hmm. people looking at you like, I know F this job, but you still got to be presentable. Right. So right. now you understanding the value of how you show up on the outside right? so that people can understand what's on the inside without you having to too much convince them of your light, right? They right. see it before you even talk about it. Um, we talked a lot about like the transition and even the steps in hindsight. Um, and it, even though you're like you're super confident, super duper like like uh, what's the word? Swaggy is the word I was gonna use. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm I'm curious. How did you deal with fear mm. as you transition from one space to the next? So I didn't have a lot of fear. Like I did. My grandmother would tell you like that girl is fearless. Like people would tell you that. 
I was afraid of heights, mm. um, maybe about 20 years ago. So if it's something that I know I'm really, really scared of, I face it. Come on. So I started doing things once again, gradually um, to overcome this fear. So uh, it was in Vegas, the ride that just drops you straight down. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of my cousins, we went on that together. Um, I did micro light flights in uh, Africa. So it's me, the pilot, and a motor back here. Oh. Like I, dra I drastically knew that I wanted to overcome the fear. So I planned to do separate things with the help of my friends and my family, right? Um, to overcome that. Yeah. And uh, it, it works. I'm still, I still have the thoughts, like the intrusive thoughts when I get really high. Mm. But now I'm able to at least go up and do it. I can go and, you know, like you like to do, um, is it Sundays when you go to Stone Mountain? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got to go to the top of the mountain. Yeah. yeah. So just understanding that um, I could be at the top of that mountain and, and I can still have those feelings of fear, but I push them to the side because I know I want to get to the top of this mountain. Mm. Right? So... Uh, that I think was at the time my largest fear. Um, it had nothing to do with life. You have like you literally approached life like okay, we just jumping in head first. Yeah, I love that about you. Yeah, the, and you know what? I realize um, when it comes to people's journey, sometimes there are more physical fe fears that we can um, apply to life, and maybe through you testing or um, what's the word facing your fears with height. Mm -hmm. When it comes to life things, you approach them with the same zeal and perhaps you go through like the fear mm -hmm. and then it overrides and you're like, okay, we're going to do this anyway. Yeah. Like, yeah. so you don't even have to like experience the paralyzing like experience of being fearful about what, what's, what's next? How am I going to make money? Yeah. How am I going to build a new life? Because I think that comes from uh, preparation too. Mm -hmm. So there are certain things that you can't prepare for, like devastating diagnosis and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but you can go ahead and get you some life insurance. You know, you can go ahead and get yourself some disability insurance as an entrepreneur. So there's certain just catastrophic things, you know, you can never prepare for, but you can always try to have something in the back of the mind or in the back of the toolbox, the back of the closet for a, a safety net. Yeah. So even though you are scared to do those things, it's it's harder to overcome certain fears when you don't have a safety net, when you don't have anything to fall back on. That's real. So so what you're saying is monetarily and familiar familiarly mm -hmm. and friends, you had a safety net and that's why you didn't necessarily feel as much fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's good. When I say that's good, that's that's a word. When when I say like in terms of like different entrepreneurial things, um it's like, I know that I have prepared, like when they say like, you know, um, in the Bible, like God will go and prepare a place for you. Like you have to recognize like the God in yourself and try to prepare a place for yourself mm -hmm. um, for the future. Yeah. So prepare a place for your future self. Yes, I love it. I'm thinking about um, your journey in entrepreneurship. But even for mine, there was a point in time where I realized um, like I got this thing. This is the new life, mm -hmm. at least for a time being. When, when, when did you decide, like, or are you still forming what that looks like for you in entrepreneurship now, uh, your new normal? Like, what does your new normal look like, or um, how have you settled in to entrepreneurship? So transitioning into my new normal, like, I try to focus on um, taking care of myself, right? So that's what that looks like first. I'm not always the best at it, but if I focus more on it and I intentionally spend time on that. So right now I'm doing a gratitude journaling challenge um, to not just challenge uh, myself, but like my mindset and and my procrastination um, and get other people to kind of like come along this journey with me mm -hmm. so that that also keeps me accountable. Um, that's what my new normal looks like. Um, just continuing to evolve like as life changes as the world changes my new normal looks like a lot of flexibility my new normal looks like having people that help me um, be accountable like even for you as a, a career coach you don't know that you're helping keep me accountable but you've been journaling for how long <laughs> shoo long time so for At me least five years it's a habit that I'm still working on mm. So my new normal looks like continuing to surround myself with people and just have, 
like y'all interactions don't have to be long when you have people that are like-minded and they're going along the journey it could be a five minute uh, phone call it could be a quick text message or even seeing them on social media yeah. so my new normal looks like embracing all the changes that are happening not just in my life and in my world but the entire world being grateful that i'm still on this side of the world i'm still on this side of the dirt and continuing to try different things in my career um a part of f this job has never been f work it's never been about that it's say it again please so a part of the concept of f this job it's never been f work it's never been f productivity it's been embracing the fact that you have talents and skills that you can take anywhere forget this you have talents and skills that you could take anywhere forget this forget what's happening right now that i don't really like there's an art to transitioning up out of there there's an art to transitioning into something else that you want to do and you can do it yeah as soon as yeah. you decide that's the life that you want to live then you can work towards it and that's the thing that we just have to get through to those who don't see that it's possible for them yet yeah because when you said like f this job is not f work you just have to now attribute your passion to the work that you do. Right now, yeah, it feels like F this job because you don't like what you're doing. Yeah. And you're not grateful for the things that the job is giving you right now. Right. So in order for you to get your next couple of blessings, you got to start there. Yep. And if y'all not picking that up, then we're just going to replay it <laughs> and, and get to it. That's okay. But you're right. Um, you mentioned that the smallest interactions mm -hmm. are like the most meaningful. They don't have to be um, long interactions. In the first time we met each other, I saw her at the podcasting, um, at the Black Podcast Fest. She was a speaker, and we passed each other real quick. And I said, "Oh, I like homegirls outfit. Like whatever, <laughs> whatever inspired her to wear that today. I'm yeah. loving all of that." We sat next to each other coincidentally, and from then on, you've been a supporter on the podcast. Been on the podcast. I've been watching your journey. <laughs> She's been traveling, and Ooh. I love 100 percent of in the essence of what you stand for transition thank you yes i swear as a business owner I, I focus on corporate professionals but i'm very much the same in terms of transitioning from light, darkness to light yeah. you know transitioning from educate no education to education yeah. you want to go from marketing to, tra to technology i don't care yeah. as people we could be whoever we want to be yep. and that's what makes us unique as humans yeah so for you and your vision before we get up out of here um what is it that you are building now in this chapter? We won't make it definitive, but we'll mm -hmm. say like in this chapter, what are you building? I'm building like a transition team, right? Um, yeah, I, I call it a transition team. So for me, I'm not like the best at um, planning everything. I'm not the best at um, having a lot of structure right but there are people who want structure they know how to build that there are people who want things to be planned there are people who they they're good at that yeah. they're they're really good at that <laughs> so you know the whole goal behind the art of transition podcast all the journals that i'm putting out is to just have like a vehicle for other people to come through and you know if they want an internship or if they want a position to you know start off let me see if i can do this videography thing let me see if i can write this script you know um maybe i want to be a resume builder you mm -hmm. know what i mean whatever it is 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 to kind of create this network of people and like this team of people who can all support one another like as they transition to all these different places in life i love it a conduit for transition yeah yeah so that that's the goal and i feel like when you have a community um you can kind of uh, move differently. We're communal people. Mm -hmm. You know, when you end up out there on an island, which is something that some people isolate themselves. Um, but that's that's what my vision is, to just continue to grow, to continue to build sustainable relationships that are uh, reciprocal, that are focused on growth and advancement. Like, there's so much abundance in terms of opportunities. And, and people are looking, looking for people like us. Yeah every day they just don't know who we are mm. and if they do that it's like once you identify uh that one person who can do this and this and that you realize that they're super busy 
because <laughs> everybody else has identified them as well. So that's why you end up seeing like the same people um, all over very different magazines because the light just got shined on them. And guess what? We're also the light. Absolutely. We're the people that are shining the light on uh, other individuals. And that's been a large part of my purpose with the podcast. It's, 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 um, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm grateful for you being a part of this journey and me being able to shine a light on you. Um, those Thank of you, you guys who are getting to know Dr. Erica, stay tuned because she is literally doing some amazing things um, in the medical industry, outside of the medical industry as a person. And I can't wait to see your next travel experience. <laughs> Like she is always traveling, yeah. so I'm, I'm gonna definitely like take those vibes. I'm gonna lift vicariously through you. Mm -hmm. um, and those of you guys who are watching, um, if you have a word for someone who's like still in their jobs, whether it's nine to five, whether it's um, medical school, whether it's in you know at post res residency, mm -hmm. and they want to get started, what would you um, say to that person to get their journey started? Just do it. <laughs> Literally, write down your plan or vocalize your plan. If you're not one of those people who, you know, write in journals or write in notebooks, make videos of yourself. If you have a bad day at work, make a video of yourself. Hey, today was not the best day at work, but this is only temporary. Document your journey somehow, some way. Be grateful for where you are. And when I say document your journey, whatever you're doing at work, whatever you're doing in your business, whatever skills you have, write it down. Mm. So when somebody asks you for your, your resume or somebody asks you for your CV, guess what? You already got it somewhere. All you have to do is shoot that email off really quickly. Stay prepared. So if you have not currently documented everything that you've done, and trust me, I'm guilty of it, right? Like I forget things, but just start where you are. And a part of starting is remembering and being grateful for the opportunities that you've had before. Document all of that. Let somebody look over that. Ask somebody to review your plan, your exit strategy, whatever mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. Ask people to look at that. I'm talking about people you trust, people who are in the field where you want to go. Just ask them, hey, I got this quick document. Can you mind looking at it? You know, be able to provide some value back. That might take, a, you know, $15, $20, $50, whatever it is. But that's a part of investing in yourself. And never forget that you and your, your body and your mind is the most expensive thing you'll ever own. So take care of it. Take care of it. Dr. Erica, thank you so much. Thank you. If there's someone out here who wants to work with you, they want to do a challenge with you, they want to still follow your journey, um, what's the best way for folks to get connected with you? Uh, at D-R-E-R-I-C-A Jones, at Dr. Erica Jones on Instagram and TikTok. I have a couple of websites. You can start at DrEricaJones.com and um, sign up for the email list. I send emails about different challenges, um, a lot of things that I may have going on. Like when I spoke at Black Pop Festival, um, I made a, a podcast uh, just video real quick. Like, hey, y'all, I'm so excited. Guess, you know, so. Once again, document your process. Decide, you know, whether or not you can share it later. You can share it 10 years later, but you have your own things to look back on and to celebrate your own milestones. Document the process, y'all. Yeah. Well, until next time, hopefully you guys got a treat with this one. We're going to just continue being great. If you are on your journey, you're leaving corporate America, you're leaving your nine to five and you want that assistance to stay on track. All of the things that we mentioned, you can do on your own. But if you need support, then you don't need to sit here and, and not ask for help. Don't be my old self or, or Erica's old <laughs> self, right? Right. Know right. how to ask for help. Know how to ask for support and go after what you believe in. All right. Until next time, y'all be great. Peace. Peace.